This is all we know, like riding bikes and yeah. progressing and always have this goal of doing stuff. But then when that was like taken away from me, yeah. you get like kind of depressed. All right, what's good and welcome back to another video. Uh, we're back in the little studio or my office or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is where I do all my editing. Nice. And now also kind of doing this little video series that I will call Pro Talks. I had Alex Alanka on for the first episode. Yeah. So. And then I also did a little one myself and uh, talking about just topics that are normally not brought up in the like glory of being a professional athlete or whatever you want to call it like it's a lot of things that goes into being a writer but it's only like like a fragment that you see on media so i that's why i bring in some friends and i today i have anton tillander here uh What's he's that? uh yeah he's a <laughs> former professional bike rider slash professional bike rider whatever you want to call it like, he was yeah do you want to do a quick introduction yeah so lex max said i guess i'm a former yeah. professional <laughs> Free Earl mountain biker and just like Max <laughs> used to compete all over the world in this uh, world tour. Loved riding bikes, competing and did all of that. Mm. Anton used to be one of the, the best riders in the world. Uh, you were, Thanks, bud. you were, but it's true though. Yeah, I guess. Marty Söderström came from Sweden. Like he was the first like uh, big yeah. pro rider, and then you were the second one that yeah. really had like a huge breakthrough. Anton was in Red Bull for how many years? Four. Four years on Red Bull, and he, you placed five, fifth in the World Tour. Six. Six. Okay. Yeah, it's my best year. And then he has a fourth place in Joyride and a lot of podiums and blah blah blah. So Anton is uh, a pretty decorative uh, rider, and uh, he's been doing insane stuff since I can remember. <laughs> like we, me and Anton grew up riding together when we were kids, and uh, yeah. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about why you're not still a bike rider as well as like i'm a bike rider come on yeah you're a bike rider <laughs> a yeah. professional one that yeah. has it as his occupation and yeah. how it was when you were up there should we just start with like when did you like decide that you kind of want to be a bike rider i guess that's uh, yeah. pretty natural for everyone yeah, but, yeah. yeah back to martin again i guess he like we crazy enough we grew up like a kilometer apart like his parents and my parents house are mm only like a kilometer apart from each other and yeah. so when I was younger I saw him and his friends just jump around in the neighborhood and at that time me and my friends were like oh that looks pretty cool and all of us got like mountain bikes and we started to do the same thing and uh, I was 10 or 11 when it all started yeah when you started like seeing that it was actual sport or yeah like yeah. just found the interest for it yeah uh, Later on, Anton went to all of these uh, contests we had in Sweden, like mm. all the skate park ones, all the smart dirt ones that we had. Yeah. And uh, later on, when you were 15 or whatever, when age you're supposed to be, when you start uh, like high school in Sweden, yeah. like the gymnasium, uh, he started a biking school, and that's a gymnasium where you basically have like biking as like a path or whatever. Like what? Yeah, so like like any. I guess they have all around the world like different sports schools yeah and uh, this one's the first time you have you can have slope style as yeah. a option to have yeah. like beside your normal yeah school work or education so that obviously like made you ride a lot in those young years when it yeah. was kind of like uh, the setup for if you would be a pro rider or not yeah and totally like from living at home moving there to ride with all of these other guys yeah. who love doing the same thing and yeah. could do it a whole lot more and yeah have it as like two or three or four times even a week yeah. like during school hours you can ride your bike or go to the gym just to uh, progress in at riding and that's also like it's a good, good place to practice on as well like For sure. if you have like-minded people there you're obviously gonna push each other and then you had you were clocking like you were riding down hours right you were yeah, down we were like putting stuff. down how much you do in the gym, how much you do in riding. So like, do you have any idea of how much, how many hours you spend over? Weekly was around twenty to twenty-five hours of training. Wow, that's a lot. That's yeah. a lot of hours. Yeah, if you think about it, it's like close to yeah, 
five hours a day if you do like and that's five days a week and that's just like physical work it's not everything around it which is no. insane and mm -hmm. obviously that's why you became one of the best writers ever uh, yes that helped <laughs> <laughs> yeah you had your breakthrough in when you were around 17 right kind of i mean you had that year where you like started winning stuff you you like you got picked up by Resolution, which mm -hmm. is the agency I have today. Uh, yeah. It's a agency that me and Anton had for a while. Emma Johnson has it. Tem Thomas Janon, Fabio, Fabio Widmer, Dan. Danny Macaskill. Um, okay, so my breakthrough season where I like traveled more internationally. It, it was in 2011 or 2012. Yeah. Because I think after the season in 2012, I got picked up by Resolution, and then from there I got picked up by Canyon. Yeah. The following year was 2013, which was my best season yeah. of my career. So I guess, yeah, 2012 was like the setup year for... And then for 2014, that. you got on Red Bull, right? No, end of 2013. And, yeah, at yeah. Martin's event. Yeah, 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 I remember that. And it's crazy times for sure. Yeah. 2013, everything went so quick from like, I don't even know what I placed in 2012, but mm -hmm. definitely not even maybe top 20 in the world. Yeah. If, even that, maybe top 30. Yeah. And then the following year, 2013, yeah. I got all, all this support from sponsors and this and that. Podium some events and then ended up sixth in the world. That's insane. Yeah, yeah we have pretty similar stories actually, like from getting picked up to like rock. Yeah, just you know? like yeah. extra push of yeah. you know, motivation and all that confidence. Like yeah. people believe in you, start like throwing money at you and stuff, and then you For just sure. like, well, maybe I am cool. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like, <laughs> definitely like gives that. you that extra yeah. confidence you need. Um, you had a couple. You had a lot of rough years with injuries as well. Like same, yeah. same as me. Yeah, same um, as you. Um, you back broke to back. your collarbones. How many times? This one three times, and this one once. Yeah. So four times collarbone injuries. The last one, which was severe, was yeah, it could like, have been. Or it could have been really, really bad. Yeah. yeah. Anton got a fracture in his neck. We'll see if we can pull up the crash here. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, oh. That one was the worst, but it wasn't that bad. It could have been really bad. Yeah. Fractured neck, yeah, sounds pretty gnarly. Uh, yeah, like I, can rem I remember that. I was standing behind you in the start, seeing that, and I remember even like I thought it was insane that you tried to do that gap because that gap, no one did it. Mm. But this guy was just. Yeah, for some reason, I like when I saw the drawing of the course, <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna do that, and then. Balls of steel, just there was no no turning back, and I thought it would be it it, it, it would, would be have been good, yeah, yeah. But I just you got launched out a bit, yeah. Because remember, I did it, tried it once, and kind of landed it, yeah. They didn't really have enough speed, and then for some reason, yeah. I went twice <laughs> the amount of speed. And just I've seen you go down and hit your head really bad once. Uh, oh yeah, was in, that in in Germany? Germany? Yeah, that was really bad. That was a, that was almost more scary to see because you just like oh, bang and then completely yeah, blacked yeah. out. That's scary when you see like friends that get knocked out and they feel like that guy's never gonna ride a bike again. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah I was out for yeah. like probably half an hour almost. Yeah, that I woke up in the ambulance. Like, oh, fuck that so was much. the worst. Um, so you had a lot of injuries and stuff, and uh, yeah. like you've dealt with all this contest pressure and sponsor pressure and all of that. Uh, not saying that it is the reason, but why? Why did you, didn't you kind of want to continue, right, uh, like do contest? Probably a mixture between all these back-to-back -back injuries. Because mm -hmm. like we said before, 2013 was my like best year in the mm -hmm. career. Uh, and then the year after I broke my right collarbone for the second mm -hmm. or first time, I think. At your um, ride, right? No, that was actually at Nine Nights. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is now, now called yeah, Audi yeah, Nines. Yeah. And it was a like, bad break as well, so I was out for two months, I believe. Yeah, I was yeah. out all the way until uh, Martin's event the following year. Yeah. So like I started riding a day before that. I remember that, but you yeah. won that event. Yeah, somehow. It was crazy just coming back and wanted to show the whole time I can still, yeah. still do this. Uh, but yeah, so then I was back. The year after was breaking my collarbone. Yeah. At your ride practice like five minutes before the contest was gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, which ended up being rained out. <laughs> so I broke kinda, my, kinda. <laughs> it's like yeah. breaking it for nothing really. Because yeah. I could have just waited and then yeah. Was it a nervous thing when you brought that collarbone? Was it like you waited with doing something in practice because it was too scary? 
Totally, yeah. Well, I know this. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was definitely that because I've only done like bonolog flips into foam before. Yeah, like all these scare things, you yeah. just postpone it and as, as long as you can. Oh my god. And yeah. then ended up doing it, landing it, but like overshooting it, landing really deep. And then the jump after I was just gonna do a celebration <laughs> flat spin <laughs> on the next hip, but ended up missing the whole landing and just exploded on the ground and broke uh, the same collarbone again, which I had surgery the yeah, year yeah. before. Oh, that's such a classic thing to do. Yeah. Like you're stressing with all the contests, all the people are starting to pile up. Like yeah, it was like a joy, especially yeah. like probably 40, 50,000 people. Standing there and watching you practice and then you mm -hmm. fuck something up in practice and then you're like, oh, no, I gotta recharge, I gotta change that, blah, blah, yeah. so Exactly the same as I broke my collarbone as well. Right, yeah. yeah. Front flip on the second jump in Jorah, just because I was like, no, three double whip won't <laughs> even be enough. Yeah, need some variation. Need some variation, and a front flip wouldn't even have been, yeah, I don't know. So that was like the back-to-back -back injuries, yeah. and from being like in the top yeah. in 2013 to then from 2014, 15, never really getting back up there. Yeah with the top guys and competing against them and more like coming to events and maybe place like top 10. Yeah. Which wasn't as fun because I guess I'm a competitive guy as well. Yeah. And uh, I guess just a mixture of injuries and then never really f like getting back into the top top and then also like lack of motivation from that led to me being not like so into yeah, yeah. competitions anymore and that led to like I don't know if I uh, competed anymore and that like yeah. made me like at the moment was like yeah I'm gonna take a break from all this and yeah. see what happens and now you're you're enjoying riding a lot now yeah because that was like I guess it took all the fun of it yeah. away from I remember riding. those years and like because me and Anton have always been close and ride a lot. Yeah. Like there was a couple of years when you were you were not yourself. Yeah, because I think one or two. Like years, maybe. this is all we know. Like riding bikes and yeah. progressing and always have this goal of doing stuff. But then when that was like taken away from me, yeah, you get like kind of depressed because like now you don't have this to work towards and yeah, yeah, definitely. Like you say, it was a couple of years where I wasn't yeah. wasn't feeling like myself. Yeah, yeah, that's For like sure. a really. That's a really tough thing to deal with, I think. For yeah. sure. It must be, like, it's hard to, like, find motivation in s situations like that. And For sure. I believe, like, I kind of understood it th all the time, like, that it was kind of dying, like, the love mm -hmm. of just, like, constantly ch chasing, like, top spots and new tricks yeah. and stuff like that, because you see other ones. That's always what we do, like, yeah. we compare ourselves to it. It looks so easy for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so hard for some people. It's that guy I've never been injured, but I've yeah. been injured five times. That doesn't seem fair. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but that yeah, that's really that's really tough to deal with. As you say, like you always look at the other guys. They're like, whoa, they're sending these amazing things. But it, mm -hmm. it's so hard to know that you can do stuff like that if you want as well. And yeah, just like yeah. wrap your head around. For sure. It's just a lot. Being injured and like moving on is really hard, and it's hard to like lock everything out on everyone yeah, else. Definitely messes with your head. So now you kind of you gotta got kind of got some closure now because I don't think you talked about that mm, in public. Kinda. Not really. Not no. really done a closure or like yeah. I'm done with this post or yeah yeah, yeah. something. So that's the so reason why Anton stopped competing. I guess. But I've been on him. Like I kind of <laughs> want him to. You should do something for fun, maybe like. Now when you don't have that pressure from yeah. like 10 big brands, you could like maybe jump in and try it just for fun or? Yeah, I mean definitely like falling back in love with riding more and more. Yeah. So I definitely could see myself do a lot more riding. I would want to be more involved in the sport because mm -hmm. I, I love the sport yeah. and I've always been watching every single contest ever yeah. since I stopped. So I've, I'm really into it and like yeah. if it could be just writing and doing like media stuff or yeah. could also see myself do some judging. All right, hope you guys liked this episode together with Anton Thielander. Thank you a lot for coming uh, by. Uh, Thank you for having me. And I uh, hope you got some closure on uh, if you ever thought about what happened to Anton Thielander's contest career. Uh, he's gonna be back with a lot of writing this year, as we said, and yeah, uh, let's do it. Let's get it. Thank you guys a lot for watching. Subscribe, like.
Do you want to say anything? Just subscribe. Much. Just subscribe if you want to. And uh, leave a comment down below if you thought about this series we're doing. And then I'll see you back in two days with a writing video or something. Cool. <laughs>